I have to thank my rivals because it's them now that gives me the motivation to, to keep pushing myself. Because, you know, I, I dreamed of winning a world championship as a child on a 50cc motocross bike. I wanted to be a world motocross champion. But that didn't work out and you know, I, I started road racing at 15 so I wanted to be a world champion. Jonathan Ray is fastest in the warm-up and on the front row in his first ever World Superbike outing. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, he, I think, is going to be a future world champion. Finally, I got that goal and then it becomes more about beating your rivals. And then when I arrived at Kawasaki, finally I had a bike to compete for a world championship, but I had a reigning world champion in the garage beside me, Tom Sykes, and, and he was super fast. You know, he knew the bike inside out. So I really had to step up, learn from him, and improve myself. And when I'd done that, I was able to beat him. Race one goes to Jonathan Ray here. Brilliant stuff, and he absolutely loves that. I had a great rivalry with Chaz Davis, because with Chaz, you can never discount him. Sometimes on a, on a Saturday, you think, why? He hasn't done good free practices, he's qualified bad, and then he goes and wins the race. It's going to be close! It's going to be Chaz who just takes it! Jonathan will have to wait another day! He's crazy like that. And then Alvaro, for four rounds last year, I didn't understand how I was going to beat this guy. Now it's another straight, and Ray must be feeling so vulnerable by this point as Bautista switches on through and takes up the race lead. We managed to turn it round in the mid-season. He had some mistakes, and then the last part of the year we dominated. Jonathan Ray wins in Manicor and secures a record-breaking fifth world title. With five consecutive world titles, Jonathan Ray is the man to beat. He, Scott Redding, is among a wide pool of potential podium contenders. Oh, up the inside goes Scott Redding. It's three out of three for Jonathan Ray. The battle between Redding and Ray. Has the Kawasaki got the grunt? Brilliant world superbike action at the front of the field. Jonathan Ray comes out on the final turn to be confirmed world champion in 2020. Ray has done it for a sixth year in a row. It means, of course it means the world. It means that I've achieved my target. You know, I can be satisfied with our job this year. I don't look back and think I've won six world championships straight away in Park Fermi whilst we were celebrating. You know, my crew chief Perry Reba was already looking forward to 2021. It was clear we had to improve the bike, so we, we spoke a lot about technical things. Uh, he followed me to the debrief here. We talked a lot more then where we need to fix the bike. It never seems enough. You know, I always wake up really hungry in the morning for more, for more victories. Um, maybe after I retire, you know, I can look back on my career and really absorb that feeling. But for now, it's always, as a racer mentality, you're always thinking about the next challenge. He's a, oh, that's Ray down, drama for Ray. Jonathan Ray trying to find his way back into the top positions, having already once left the circuit altogether, is now out of the race here at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. 2020 was, let's say, from a mentality point of view, was super tough, um, because I crashed out of the first round of the season. Um, I give a lot of points away in race two. I felt like I had everything in line to win. You know, I'd done everything perfect. As Alex Lowe's gets down the inside of Jonathan Ray, Vandermark has followed him, and Ray is going to have to work very hard now to get back to the front. Alex came past with a couple laps to go. Just put me that little bit wide in T1. You know, I can, I can accept that. You know, he did a better race in the end. Alex Lowe's ahead of Jonathan Ray wins in Phillip Island. The biggest thing leaving Australia was just that we were 19 points behind. That was the only thing. And then the whole world went into lockdown. You know, every 
day was the same with no target you know I woke up every day with not knowing when I was going to ride again not knowing if we were going to race this season and to be honest I thought if this championship gets cancelled is, is Alex going to be world champion or I thought you know can they crown a world champion after one round all these questions were going through my head I'm over this I just need to ride my bike don't get on your bike then Mentally that was tough because I didn't have a purpose, so I really threw myself into training. I rode my bicycle online on the online trainer with some other superbike riders, MotoGP riders, Leon Haslam, Fabian Foray, my coach, Marcel Schrotter, Jake Dixon. Even though you were detached from the outside world, you still had a community around you, like racing people stick together. You know, racing's a big family and that was super cool. It was super tough when I seen the revised calendar. You know, during lockdown I thought, if I could pick seven more races to finish the year, there would at least be three or four more on there that I liked. Uh, can we not go to Donington? Can we not go to Assen, Imola, you know, Qatar, Argentina? You know, it was a pretty much a summer championship. I read, I read a lot of journalist reports talking about how it would hurt us, this, this championship with the, the rounds being weaker races for me and for Kawasaki, how the temperatures would go against us, but in the end, the job we did during that summer period was um, really useful. When did I think I was going to win? Um, I took a lot of confidence from Aragon, to be honest. Okay, I wasn't thinking about, I'm going to win the championship, but I thought, you know, if I can beat these guys here, you know, it wasn't just Scott there, all the Ducatis were fast and I beat them all. It's when I felt like I really took control of the championship and it was like okay if I can do that why can't I do it in Barcelona and we went there and won the first ever race in circuit Barcelona in KRT's home territory the first ever winner in a world SBK race here in Catalonia it's Jonathan Ray I had a tough race on Sunday but Scott had an even worse race so suddenly you see a rival that seems incredible with no mistakes when you have a bad day, he has a worse day. It's kind of, it went um, hand in hand. And I felt like after Barcelona, I started to feel, if I can survive Magna Cura and not give away points, we can, we can get the job done. No, to be honest, I always maintain that you need two, three races, three, four races to understand your main rivals. And I was quite reserved in the beginning to understand where the where the challenges were going to come from, and quite clear it was Scott. So about Scott, he's super, a super nice guy. Uh, he's always been very open, clear, honest with me. He's quite civil in the paddock, but the rivalry is, is intense, you know, on track. Redding has the comeback manoeuvre, side by side again as they hit down towards turn eight. The elbows are out from Redding. You, know, you can see it in places in Barcelona when we were riding with no margin. Darking down the inside, ready, aggressive to recover that P5. He will not allow the reigning world champion to stay in front of him. In, in France, when he passed me in the wet condition at 180, was super aggressive move. But, you know, that's how I ride too. Right, the oh. leaders there are close to making contact on the run through 180. It's been a breath of fresh air having him come to the championship as well. You know, so much experience in MotoGP with factory teams. Legitimately, he was Marc Marquez's biggest rival in Moto2. Oh, but big moment for Marquez coming out down towards Vale. And surely Reading will have a go. He does on the inside of Vale. The crowd are on their feet here at uh, Club Corner. We just sit on the inside there. It's going to be a Spargo wins and it looks as though Marquez is going to have a go into Club. Is he is he's gonna be Reading is gonna come across the line, surely. Marquez runs it wide, Reading takes second. So I really respected him when he came. I knew that he could do a good job, especially after seeing what Alvaro did in 2019 with the Ducati. He never gives up. He's got a lot of really good qualities. But also they motivate me to make 
myself even better to brush up on my weak areas so that I can be even stronger in 21. The battle between Redding and Ray. Has the Kawasaki got the ground? Jonathan Ray threw up the inside of Scott Redding. Top Rack was one of the guys that has taken a little bit longer to adapt to his new bike than I thought he would. His form and speed when he left Kawasaki was incredible. You know, he beat me outright in Manicure with the same package. Ross Gatlioglu looking to the inside line on Jonathan Ray. Top Rack Ross Gatlioglu takes his first career win. You know, you can't then go looking for excuses about this bike does that. You know, he beat me on the same bike and I felt like Man, if he goes to this Yamaha and clicks with it, he's going to be fast. And for some reason or another, he hasn't found that consistency right yet, but he's growing, you know, and winning at the last round in Estoril showed how strong he is. And, you know, if he can carry that form through three off season, he's going to be super fast. Top Rack wins in Estoril for the second time this weekend. Onto the top step of the podium, his second victory of the campaign. There's so many, you know, so many race winners this year. and. I didn't expect that many, to be fair. It just shows the depth right now in Superbike. Still consistency is key. When you have a bad day in Superbike right now, you have to make sure you minimize the damage in that bad day. And I think we managed to do that better than the others this year. Where's the limit? I don't know where the limit is. Um, Honestly, I'm living in a bubble right now and it's, it's super nice and I don't want it to burst because so I enjoy being dad and husband at home, but equally I enjoy the atmosphere coming to work and it's, it's nice, it's, it's glamorous at times on TV, but it's hard work. You know, you're riding a 200 horsepower plus motorcycle, 175 kilos within millimeters of other riders, you know, searching for the perfect lap all the time and taking massive risks and you know the consequences of that is can be a disaster but whilst it's fun in a good atmosphere with really good people around me it's it's incredible feeling so i want to keep that going and going and going and to keep trying to develop the zx 10 rr as well for me you can create the stability that that I have inside KRT because it's a it's a real human team. The group of guys have stayed together, you know, from from Perry, our boss if you like, right down through to you know our partners, uh, Showa Suspension, Javier, uh, everybody inside. We all work together. I put my life in their hands all the time. You know, I would go to war for each and every one of them. They've become they've become lifelong friends. Everything lined up for this group of people to meet each other and create something special. And I feel very fortunate to be part of it. I really miss Tarsh and the kids being at races because they bring a really nice balance. You know, when things are stressful inside the box, I only have to go back to the motorhome and, 
and see normal life to realize that, hey, my problems there aren't too bad, you know, everything's fine and they're my rock. You know, my wife's been home with two kids now for so, so long. You know, I get the luxury of changing up my life a little bit by jumping on a plane and changing the routine slightly, where she doesn't. And she's, um, yeah, she's certainly my hero this year, um, both her and the kids. Valentino Rossi, Giacomo Agostini, Michael Schumacher, Lewis Hamilton, Johnny Ray, six world championships, it's something crazy. What means for you to be in this list? Well, the, the list of guys you mentioned are like superstars. So I don't classify myself. It's hard to compare. You know, when I remember in Superbike, when I won three world titles, somebody said, or just told me that I'd equaled uh, Troy Bayless's record. I thought, Troy Bayless, like really? And, and now here we are with six, it's, um, it's incredible. Uh, I want to really let this championship sink in. Go, I hope to go on holiday. Um, relax a little bit with Tarsh and the kids and, and then start to focus on 21 when, it, when it's go time, you know. Statistics are great. I'm not one for stats. You know, one that is huge is 100 victories. You know, that's something at the start of the season that I, I thought about and really, the first time I thought about statistics and to think to get to 100 SBK victories would be incredible. It's a case of just putting that on pause right now because I want to let everything, you know, all these feelings of 2020 absorb and, and really enjoy that.